Arsenal are ready to make a big statement. The season starts in two days time. I am so excited. I can't tell you for a camera just how excited I am to see Arsenal back in action in the Premier League. I also need your help trying to figure out a few things before the game starts. And I definitely think there's a, a few talking points on here that will generate some discussion. I think there's going to be some difference of opinions. And I want to hear what you guys think. Before we get into it though, just very quickly, do me a favour. Hit like on this video. So I want to start by talking about the Wolves game. You know, what are you guys expecting for this game? Before we talk about it, let me know in the comments section, what is your score prediction for this game? Look, we obviously played them twice in the league last season, won 2-1 at home, and then we won 2-0 at the end of the season. It was a, a, a an easy enough game, I would say. Wolves definitely had their moments, something we'll talk about in this video. In terms of personnel, look, if we're being honest, Wolves have just lost their two best players. Pedro Neto has gone to Chelsea. And Max Kilman, the Maiden Edge United legend, you know, he's gone elsewhere as well. So they are a weaker club. Now, they still have some dangerous players that we need to look out for. You know, we can't go into this game thinking this is going to be easy. Inevitably, this should be an easy enough game. I, I hear a lot of people out there saying, I don't care about the performance. I just want to see the three points. And I understand that premise. But if I'm going into this game and I'm being totally honest, I do care about how Arsenal play. You know, Arsenal are not the team no more where we should just be looking to go into games and just collect free points. There is a point in the season where you have to just grind out them results. And maybe if you're in a game and it's 1-1 at maybe 70 minutes, you're looking at it saying, right, listen, I'll just take the free points now. But I think at home, going into a game against Wolves, I would be looking to go into that game, yeah, to get the three points, but also to be kind of seeing what Mikel Arteta is looking to do this season. You know, what passages of play can we see? You know, it's a new season. I'm sure Mikel Arteta will have introduced some new passages of play, some new tactics, and I'm excited to break them down, to talk about them, to see how this team will shape up. What will the start in 11 be? What is the score going to be? Like I said, it's the first game of the season. Three points, of course, it's important, but I want to see some proper Arsenal plays. So, something we saw so many times last season, I want to see that Arsenal philosophy straight away. We've been void of this Arsenal football for so long. It's especially in like competitive competitions. You know, we had the, the pre-season friendly. We had the tours, but it's never the same. I thought we definitely saw some good football, but there's nothing like competitive fixtures to bring out, bring the best out of players. And with the players that we've got, I think you're definitely going to see that. Look, like I said, it's definitely going to be an interesting game. I, f I think in the game towards the end of last season, I think Wolves definitely had their attacks, but I think... Arsenal's defence was was probably shaping up slightly to what I expect this weekend. If I'm being honest, we saw Kivior in at left back. And I'm excited to see what Mikel Arteta opts to do in this. We had the discussion, discussion in yesterday's video about who will the left back be. If you didn't watch that video, let me know who you think the left back's going to be. I'm expecting it to be Calafuri. I'll tell you what, let's get straight into the, the starting 11. Let me go, let me know your guys' starting 11s. But if I'm having to pick right now, I would obviously go David Raya in goal. That's the, that's the easiest one of the, the pick. You know, Aaron Ramsdale hasn't seen any football. It's looking like he'll probably be sold, but there's not many suitors out there for him. So in this game, it's going to be David Rea, Ben White, Saliba, Gabriel. And then I would go Calafuri at left back. I don't expect that to happen, though. If I'm being honest, I think Mikel Arteta will probably go with Zinchenko in that left back position. You know, he's played there for a lot of the preseason. He seems comfortable. He seems to have actually had a good preseason. He was suspect at times defensively, again, something we've spoke about. But I think Mikel Arteta definitely trusts Zinchenko in that position. I think he does know that he can improve in that position, and that's why we've seen reinforcements being brought in. But for this game, I expect him to play Zinchenko. I would be happy if he does play, play Calafuri. Like I said, that's the guy I would go for. But I think uh, uh, I think it's going to be Zinchenko, if I'm being honest. I would go Calafuri. In the six. I'm hoping to see Thomas Partey. I think he definitely struggled pre-season, but I think in that last game, he definitely showed what he can offer. We saw glimpses of what Thomas Partey can do for this Arsenal team, the way he can affect games, the way he can get attacks going. Thomas Partey, I hope, stays fit this season because he can have a massive part to play. You know, going into the season, it was Thomas... Uh, going into the transfer window, sorry, Thomas Partey needs to be sold. Thomas Partey isn't reliable enough. Last season, he wasn't. But the season before that, he did play, what, 30, 40 games. If we can get that level of fitness again out of Thomas Partey, then Arsenal will be dangerous. It's looking like we're going to bring Mikel Marino in as well. 
if we can keep a, a fit Thomas Partey, that will balance our squad so well. In this game, six, Thomas Partey. Number eight, Declan Rice. And then 10, Odegaard. Saka on the right. Uh, Trossard on the left. And Havertz up front. Now, I don't know if that will be the team. It's definitely hard to guess because Mikel Arteta has been coming out in interviews and saying he wants to see Havertz and Trossard play, uh, sorry, Havertz and Gabriel Jesus play together. So I wouldn't be shocked in this game if he actually plays Rice as six and then he plays uh, Havertz at eight and then Gabriel Jesus up front. I, it depends what kind of system you want to go for. I guess in a game like this, you probably can afford to be slightly more attacking. So it wouldn't surprise me if if maybe Thomas Partey's on the bench and then we see Declan Rice. Or, or again, that opens another discussion though, because... Saka and Rice were back from international duty quite late. So would he be looking at it and saying, no, Declan Rice can have another week on the sidelines. We're, we're more than strong enough with Thomas Partey and uh, Havertz in midfield with Odegaard in front. I don't know. Like I said, let me know your guys' thoughts. This is definitely a talking point. That midfield is definitely an interesting position that so many variations can be played. Look, I could, I've just gave you about two or three different central midfield partnerships or midfield, and it could be none of them. The answer could still be Jorginho. I wouldn't go for it, but it wouldn't surprise me if Mikel Arteta does. You know, it's very difficult to to guess a Mikel Arteta team at the minute. When we get into our full flow, I think in a, in this season, it's very predictable at times. You can definitely guess what Mikel Arteta's best team will be because he consistently plays that. But I think early on in the season, until he kind of figures that out, until we have all the players up to fitness, until we have players like Calafuri, Timber up to speed... I think it's going to be difficult. I think there's definitely going to be variables. I think there's going to be variations. I think he's going to be able to switch it. And in a game like this, it's not the most difficult first game of the season. Famous last words, I understand. But I'm just hoping to see a, a good game. I know players in this team can have good games. Odegaard, for example, he flourishes against Wolves. For some reason, he's always on top form against Wolves. Now, Odegaard's very good in most games, but we've played Wolves like I said, two times last season in the league, of course, and he scored in both games. So maybe Odegaard would be a decent shout to score in this game. But let me know who your scorers would be. In terms of a score prediction, I'm going to go, I'm going to start it off with a nice, easy 3-0 to Arsenal. I'm going to go for Saka, Martin Odegaard, and maybe a Trossard goal. I don't know. I just want to see a good game. Like I said, I'm just so excited to see Arsenal back. In terms of the title race, teams you would expect to be in and around Arsenal when the end of the season comes. Man City, of course. They've got a difficult game this weekend. They're playing Chelsea. Now, a lot of people these days look at Chelsea as a soft touch. But if they get it right, if they go into this season with a new manager, they get that new manager bounce. Then Man City, this could be a dangerous game for Man City. How many times over the past three or four seasons have Man City started slow? And a game like Chelsea is not an easy game, first game of the season. Like I said, they do have some quality players. If you're looking at their team on paper, they've got about 329 players, but they do have a good squad. And like I said, if they gel, if Maresca gets it right straight away, then Man City could be in for a tough, even, uh, a, a tough afternoon. Liverpool, they've got an easy game against Ipswich. Do I expect Liverpool to be challenging Arsenal this season? I see a lot of people out there saying they expect Liverpool with this new manager to be in and around it at the end of the season. If I'm being honest, I don't see Liverpool as being ready yet. I think if they got Zubamendi and maybe one or two more, they would have been a lot closer. But I think Liverpool have peaked, obviously, a few seasons ago. And now they, they are in some kind of rebuild. I think they do still have some decent players. I think the way that they play is obviously very interesting. They're always a good team to watch. But I just don't think the quality is there. If I'm looking at Liverpool's first 11 and I'm looking at Man City or Arsenal's 11, I don't see many players from Liverpool's team that get into either of those sides. And Liverpool fans will be furious at that. But that's just the way I see it. I don't think Liverpool right now are as good as Arsenal or Man City. They have been previously. Liverpool fans still think they're at that level, but they're not. That's just the truth of it. I don't know. Like I said, let me know your score predictions. Let me know your thoughts on the game. Let me know who you think is going to score. Let me know your start in 11s. I just can't wait to see Arsenal back in action this Saturday. Thanks so much to everyone for watching and listening. Before you go, like I said, just do me a favour. Hit like on this video. Just like it and subscribe. And I'll speak to you all in tomorrow's video. Gooners, have a good day.